Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. Welcome to the second video on Advanced Construction Materials Course MKAE 1043. As mentioned previously in the first video, my emphasis in this course is on geosynthetics. Referring to the first video, I had explained the definition of geosynthetics the applications of geosynthetic materials in civil engineering field, which include uh, highway and transportation engineering, geotechnical engineering, environmental engineering, and hydraulics. In addition to that, I also mentioned about the five major functions of geosynthetic, namely separation, reinforcement, filtration, drainage, and containment. Besides that, I described briefly the eight major types of uh, geosynthetics, which are geotextile, geogrid, geonet, geomembrane, geosynthetic clay liner, geofoam, geopipes, and geocomposite. Keep in mind that geosynthetic people are continuously doing research and development on these materials so that we would anticipate that there are new products for applications other than those I had explained in the first video. Since there are hundreds or maybe thousands of geosynthetic products produced by hundreds of uh, geosynthetic manufacturers around the globe, we should expect there are various types of characteristics or properties of the geosynthetics that we have to look into depending upon our needs and depending upon the applications. However, in this video, I will look into some of the properties which I refer to as uh, physical and mechanical properties of geosynthetics. Principally, geosynthetics are produced based on plastic industry using polymeric materials originated from hydrocarbons. Some examples of uh, commonly polymeric materials used in manufacturing geosynthetics are high-density polyethylene, some people call it as HDPE, linear low-density polyethylene, LDPE, polypropylene, uh, polyvinyl chloride, PVC, polyester, and so on. Uh, the basic feedstock to produce this polymer to make geosynthetics is ethylene gas. There are two major types of polymeric materials in relation to uh, temperature. One is what we call thermoplastic polymer and another one is thermoset polymer. Thermoplastic polymer can be reheated until it's a softening point and reshaped without changing the structure of the uh, polymer. And whereas the uh, thermoset polymer, it cannot be uh, reheated. One important aspect related to the behavior of polymeric uh, material or geosynthetics is what we call crystallinity. When we talk about crystallinity, there are two types of material which are crystalline solid and amorphous solid. As for crystalline solid, the constituent particles are arranged in regular fashion and these materials are normally hard such as diamond or marble. Uh, the stiffness uh, resistant to heat and the tensile strength of crystalline solid are increased with increasing crystallinity. On the other hand, for the amorphous uh, solid, the constituent particles are not arranged in regular fashion and the materials are normally soft like gel, rubber or uh, chalk. There are two fundamental temperatures associated with polymeric materials which are melting temperature and glass transition temperature. Let's take a look at this typical graph which relates heat and temperature on crystalline solid. As the heat is increased, the temperature of the material increase until a certain point where the increasing in heat will not increase the temperature. Then the temperature will start to increase again. The point at which the temperature is constant is known as melting temperature. 
So the heat here is being used to cause melting to the material. So below the uh, melting temperature, the material is in a solid phase. Beyond the melting temperature, after it has uh, reached the required heat, the material becomes liquid. On the other hand, for amorphous material, as the heat is increased, the temperature of the material also increases until it reaches a point which is known as glass transition temperature, beyond which increasing the heat will further increase the temperature. Below the uh, glass transition temperature, the condition of the material is known as glassy condition, whereas uh, the condition beyond or above the glass transition temperature, the material is under condition what we call rubbery or flexible. Now, this diagram shows the relationship between modulus and temperature of amorphous material. As the temperature is increased, the modulus generally decreased. And this curve can be divided into a number of zones. Here, the, which is known as a glassy, here the material becomes rubbery, and here the material becomes uh, has undergone what we call viscous flow. Now, let's take a look at some of the uh, physical properties of geosynthetic materials. In this video, I will talk about only four of the physical properties of geosynthetics. One is a specific gravity or SG. Uh, specific gravity is defined as the ratio of the material's unit volume weight without voids to that of distilled water. In other words, it's the ratio of the unit weight of the material to the unit weight of water. Or we can calculate or uh, determine the specific gravity based on the density of the materials divided by the density of distilled water. Uh, this table tabulates some of the values of uh, specific gravity of some materials. For example, here we have steel, 7.87 generally. Soil or rock range from about 2.4 to 2.9, but if we have peat, the specific gravity will be much lower than 2.4. And then we here we have PVC is a polymeric material with the specific gravity of 1.69. Cotton natural material here, 1.55. Polyester, nylon, uh, polyethylene, polypropylene. And if we look closely to the values related to polymeric materials, the, the values are lower than 2.0. Uh, in addition to that, in terms of mass per unit area, depends on the type of the materials or depend uh, on the types of the geosynthetic. For example, here, the weight or mass per unit area, it may range from 150 gram per meter squared up to 750 gram per meter squared. So this is in terms of a geotextile. However, in the case of a geosynthetic clay liner or GCL, it may reach up to 4 kilogram per meter squared. So those are some values related to mass per unit area of a geosynthetic materials. Uh, the third properties that I want to talk about here is the uh, thickness. Again, depending upon the products of uh, the geosynthetics, the thickness may vary. For example, here it may vary from 0.25 mm to 5 mm. And the thickness is measured to the accuracy under, uh, sorry, to the accuracy of 0.2 mm under 2 kPa pressure because uh, some of this material may be laid or may be placed under pressure. So the thickness is measured under 2.0 kPa. The fourth physical properties of geosynthetic that I want to talk about here is what we call a stiffness or flexibility. In this case, a strip of geosynthetic materials is allowed to bend under its own weight due to gravity. The uh, stiffness is measured as bending length 
to the power of 3 multiplied by mass per unit area so that the unit becomes a gram meter. This bending length is determined based on one half of overhang length. So let's take a look at this diagram. So the geosynthetic uh, materials is allowed to move and then it will bend. This is a roller, okay, so roller. So these uh, geosynthetic materials will move horizontally and then due to its own weight, it will start bending. So the overhang length L here is determined when this uh, geosynthetic material makes an angle of 41.5 degrees with respect to horizontal. Okay. Those are the uh, methods or the procedures to determine the stiffness. Stiffness equals to bending length to the power of 3 multiplied by mass per unit area. And then this bending length is determined based on one half of overhang length. So this is the overhang length from the center of the roller here up to the end of this geosynthetic material, uh, provided that this geosynthetic strip makes an angle of 41.5 degrees with respect to horizontal. Let's move on to mechanical properties. In this video, I will be talking about five mechanical properties, which are tensile strength, uh, fatigue strength, confined tensile strength, compressibility, and puncture strength. First, let's take a look at tensile strength. So the, uh, this tensile strength is defined as the maximum tensile stress that the specimen can sustain at point of failure. This diagram shows a typical curve or graph obtained from tensile strength of a material. On the y-axis is the uh, represent stress or tensile stress and on the x-axis uh, it represents the strain. Okay, this is the uh, typical uh, graph. So from uh, this curve or from this graph, we can obtain certain values such as maximum tensile stress or strength and then strain at failure, toughness, as well as modulus of elasticity. Uh, the second mechanical properties that I want to talk about here is fatigue strength. This fatigue strength is referred to the ability of the fabric to withstand repetitive loading before undergoing a failure. Basically, the specimen is stressed longitudinally at a constant rate of extension to a predetermined load, normally less than uh, failure, and then the load is being released or being lowered until zero load, and then uh, the loading or the cycling is repeated until the material fails. The third uh, mechanical property that I want to talk about here is compressibility. In this case, Compressibility is referred to change in thickness at various normal stresses. Uh, this uh, property is important if the geosynthetic material is employed, uh, is used to convey liquid such as uh, leachate or water. Keep in mind that most of these uh, geosynthetic materials are placed uh, on the ground, are normally under stresses. So those stresses may cause change in terms of the thickness of the materials. This property is important if the geosynthetic materials is employed to uh, convey liquid or for drainage within the plane. Having said that, if the material is highly compressible, then the ability of the liquid to flow within the plane will be reduced uh, significantly. The fourth mechanical properties here is confined tensile strength. So before this, when we talk about tensile strength, the material uh, or the geosynthetic sample is a stress longitudinally under atmospheric condition. In the case of confined tensile strength, the sample is subjected to confining stress. In this case, the specimen with the dimension of 200 mm by 100 mm is sandwiched between lubricated membranes and thin soil layers under confining pressure and subjected to tensile stress. 
let's take a look at uh, this diagram okay this is the pressure chamber or confining chamber so in the middle here is the geosynthetic sample sandwiched between two thin lubricated membrane the thick black lines here those are the lubricated membranes and then we have uh, thin layers of soil okay thin layers of soil here here and then uh, the entire specimen here are subjected to confining pressure or confining stress after applying the predetermined confining stress the geosynthetic materials is subjected to tensile stress this testing setup is to duplicate what is going to be in the field in the field geosynthetic material normally will be laid on the ground and then other materials will be placed on top of the geosynthetic materials in that case the geosynthetic materials will be under confining stresses the fifth mechanical property that i want to touch in this video is puncture strength keep in mind that most of uh, geosynthetic materials will be placed on the ground and those geosynthetic materials will be uh, exposed to sharp objects like uh, vegetative residues or sharp uh, gravels or sharp rocks which may cause puncture to the materials in order to prevent puncture to the materials the material must be tested based on what we call puncture test in this puncture test a specimen or geosynthetic fabric will be firmly clamped to an empty cbr mold with the diameter of 150 mm then cbr plunger with the diameter of 50 mm will be used to cause puncture to the uh, geosynthetic material normally compression machine with a prescribed or predetermined rate will be used to cause puncture to these uh, geosynthetic materials and the resistance to puncture normally is measured in terms of force units okay those are the materials that i want to share with you in this video in terms of some properties of geosynthetic materials until we meet again in other videos on geosynthetic materials Thank you.